name's Alan Ross, and I am the Editor-in-Chief of Transformer Technology and uh, a bunch of other things that we do. Uh, and my guest for this profile is Kaya, Kaya Kazi Dioka. Have I got it right, Kaya? Yes, that's just, perfect, you, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, But I'm calling you Kaya from now on because that's what people call you. Um, mm -hmm. Kaya is with ESCOM. She is responsible for more Transformers than any woman that I know. So congratulations on that. <laughs> In South Africa, the transmission part of it and the distri distribution part of the grid is a uh, uh, responsibility of ESCOM. She is the transform Transformer expert from ESCOM and a bunch of other stuff. She, uh, we're gonna talk about that with her role with C. Gray, uh, both C. Gray and the Transformer, what we would call the Transformer Committee, and with C. Gray in South Africa and uh, a lot of other things. So welcome to our profile, Kai, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, uh, Alan, and it's a pleasure and an honor to be uh, interviewed by you, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We do we do some fun things. One of the neat things, so, so people need to know that when you and I first met, the teddy bears were high, behind you, and I couldn't give up on the teddy bears. So the teddy bears are indicative of. So Kai is a smart woman, responsible for transformers, uh, involved in Sea Great, but the teddy bears are also part of another role that she plays, which is mother. And you are the mother to two daughters. Tell us a little bit about your daughters. Thank you so much, Alan. Um, I've got two daughters. Uh, I think they are very brilliant young ladies. Um, they are both, <laughs> but they take after the mother. Um, their father agrees. So uh, they like one is almost eleven now, and and the other one is um, is eight. She turned eight about three months ago. And um, I think they, they actually want to do a whole lot of things, but engineering is none of them. Interestingly enough, though, the youngest one, um, I took them to work one time and one of my colleagues, uh, we were doing design reviews. So we gave them, you know, like a calculation to do quickly of the clearances. We wanted to calculate the stress in between the windings. And uh, so she, she did this whole quick, it's, it's just a kind of, she needed to subtract two numbers from each other. And then she got the distance and she, from that, she said she wants to be a transformer, which is quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was five at that time. So. Yeah, the first, you know, when I told, I told my two sons when I first got involved with transformers, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and um, the youngest one, when he heard the word transformer, he said, dad, I love Transformers. Of I mean, course. Optimus Prime. And I said, not that kind of Transformers, son. So, yeah, there goes on. Let's talk a little bit about your role um, at both ESCOM, and, and we'll separate that between your role at Seagray. But at ESCOM, you have enormous numbers of Transformers that are your responsibility, both tr power Transformers, distribution Transformers. So tell me a little bit about your how you go about managing. Obviously, you have a team of people that support you, but how you go about managing such an incredibly large fleet of Transformers? Um, it's quite an interesting task. I think it's one of the things that uh, made me uh, stay in this world because it's uh, it's not um, you're not doing the same thing every day, and also the the scope is quite huge. So I'm in the engineering uh, environment, so we are under technology. So what we do is we look after all these transformers from specifying the transformer, ensuring that whatever that we purchase as the organization is according to, to the need of our network. So the needs of our network and, and so the specification goes out. And then further to that, we, we specify it according to, to the climate, to the South African needs. So not just the network, but also the environment that we are in, because these transformers could be procured from anywhere in the country. They're different sizes. We've got uh, power transformers of 10 MVA or even 2.5 MVA, but we also have 800 MVA transformers. So we, you, you can um, appreciate the, you know, the, the fleet size and, and the ranges that we have. And so it makes even the, the life cycle management of it being a little bit different because you need to specify what you need for the smaller transformers. I mean, there are things that you can easily install on an 800 MVA transformer to, to monitor its condition. However, if you were to implement the same on the smaller transformers, then there is no value for money because now whatever else that you put 
put on that transformer is costing more than the actual cost of the unit itself. So it's 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 quite interesting because it's it's not every day one minute you've got um, a transformer that has failed because we're involved in the failure investigations as well. So now once it is at site and it's a severe investigation that requires specialists, then that's when we get involved. And it is that kind of feedback that we actually use to to monitor the the transformer like throughout its life cycle, and we can feed back into the revision of a specification if there is a need for that. So I think that's the other advantage that we have is that we get to see the whole lifespan of the transformer, what causes the transformers to fail, how have we specified them about 15, 10 years back, and um, what is it that we can do to improve the reliability of these transformers. So there's a lot of things that we get involved in. Uh, we, we do there with the technology change. If there's new technology that needs to be introduced, we basically uh, introduce that uh, in our research department and then we oversee and, and, and ensure that it's something that can be implemented in our fleet. So there's quite a huge scope um, of, of our work that we do as far as transformers is concerned. So. That's basically what we do at ESCOM. I mean, for as far as transformers are called, power transformers are concerned on the transmission network, we've got um, over like 600, and this is like just the power transformers, and then over 100 reactors. So when you're talking of transformers, we also talk of reactors in our section. And then over and above that, we have got over 5,000 on the distribution network, and this is power transformers on the distribution okay. network anything from 1.25 mva um all the way to uh, 160 mva at 132 kb this is the distribution level and then we get now the pole mounted transformers which we uh, i think the official term engineering term is is distribution transformers that's what is known as distribution transformers so those are the small transformers that are mounted on the poles or you see them ground mounted um, outside your house uh, those are the kind of transformers. Then that fleet alone is over four hundred thousand. Oh so, God. but the specification yeah. of that is is what we are responsible for choosing the suppliers for those and ensuring that the designs are according to our requirements. So we do the design reviews and we do the the factory acceptance test. That is still under our responsibility. But the actual asset management and you know the maintenance of it, the operation of it, then that belongs to to the field staff and their management. I, I the the scope. Okay, you, I love that word. The scope of what you do is as broad as anything. I mean, here, you, you um, I know a few people that do what you do here in some of the utilities, but I think you might be bigger than any utility in North America in, in terms of the scope of what you've got. You mentioned something, this is interesting, the difference between the things you would do to monitor and do the diagnostics on an 800 MVA versus on what you would do with a four and a half MVA. I mean, Right now, this idea of monitoring, get monitors on everything, get the data in, um, obviously that's something that's happening in South Africa in the ESCOM network, but you, you don't put a monitor that costs $10,000 or $20,000 or even $100,000 on a pole mount transformer that it doesn't matter. You know, when it fails, it fails. So one of the things we're gonna approach from a reliability perspective is um, reliability is about an asset operating as it was designed to operate for as long as it was designed for. Most transformers are way beyond their, their life cycle. You know, I imagine you've got some over 50 year old transformers and some brand new ones. Um, and most of our grid in North America is over, I think the average power transformer in the American grid, not counting Texas, is uh, is 38 years old. They were not designed to last 38 years, right? Mm -hmm. The same has got to be true there. And so how do you go about deciding a monitoring program, a program as opposed to monitoring for an individual transformer? Does it matter age? What, what conditions do you take into account when you start looking at getting data from a transformer? 
Right. So um, monitoring for us is, is more on the size of the transformer. Okay. So we would like to, yes. So what we usually do, we've got what we, we call the asset health appraisal. So okay. in that, we actually know each and every transformer condition. So we confirm this every two to three years. So say this is the fit um, that we have, and this is the condition of each and every transformer. And, and from that, oh, so the input into that report is, is your your is what you get from your condition monitoring, which is your guesses on the transformer. So we've got that. And it, it gives us an indication on, or on which of the transformers are healthy and which transformers need attention. And that attention could be replacement. That attention could be immediate uh, maintenance, any repair work that needs to be done. So each transformer condition then, it's, it's reported on this asset health report every two to three years. And, and then all the, the actions are taken from that. So out of this asset health report, we've got recommendations for a replacement project. So we put the transformers, the critical transformers on a replacement project. And, and those go, go into our projects department and, and they would then start the procurement process for those for, for replacement. And then the rest of the transformer, we categorize them according to maintenance that is required. For instance, a transformer that is in a, a bad condition, but that condition came about um, from, from guessing of the transformer. So right. a guessing transformer indicates that it has a developing fault. And from that, that can be rectified. So you investigate the developing fault, you rectify it, and the transformer is back in service, and you monitor it again, and it's back into a good uh, condition. And so that's basically how we, we, we categorize them or how we, we prioritize replacement. We do not replace, and, and this has been the case for like the last over, over five years now, we do not replace according to age, but we replace according to condition because then the condition will determine whether it's the transformer needs a replacement or not. Now, that is brilliant because um, there are too many places that we see uh, replacing transformers because of age and, and they're, they're actually replacing transformers that are good. They're just old and they're not replacing ones that are not as good and uh, they're, they're much newer. So the idea that you place, it's also gotta be an enormous task to get that DGA data and, and continuously get the DGA data and update it because DGA is like instant, it can happen instantaneously. It does not happen over two to three years unless it's overheating. But um, you must have a very robust, for, for that asset health uh, program, is that is that something that you developed in ESCOM? Something that is uh, you use outside vendors for? Because that is probably the hardest thing is to develop a database that you can continue to update that tells you when to do what you just said you do. It's the trends that need replacing and repairs that can be repaired. So how do you manage that vast uh, amount of data that's coming in? So we've got a database for, for our um, maintenance activities within ESCOM. And, right. and so every time there is a sample, so the, when it comes to DGA, there is two ways to do it. Some of our transformers are fitted with online gas analyzers. And, yeah. and those, their condition, you actually know it. And as soon as a gas goes up, there's already a message to the asset owner that there is something going on with that transformer and you can immediately, immediately take action on that one. Uh, but historically, we've been doing all samples every six months for the big transformers. Now I'm, I'm referring to the transmission ones. So we've been doing an oil sample, manual oil sample. So every six months, there is somebody that takes out the, or the oil sample, but that information is stored in our database in our at our research uh, laboratory. So all of that is, is readily available. I can access it from my computer. So for any other, for any transformer that has been sampled and then has uh, the data that has been loaded, I've got access to it. Now, what we do is we get that information into what... Uh, um, the, the, our asset health appraisal uh, Excel that we, we have developed to put all these information we extracted 
and then we get this information and it already what it what it does it does trending Okay. So we planned the data. So that's how you actually that's I think that's the key to to DGA. It's it's right. trending the data to see how whether there is a developing fault. The sudden one, it's it's usually something that you cannot really catch, even with your online DGA. If yeah. it happens that fast, then you already have missed it and you've got a failure which you have to investigate. But at least you know that it hadn't developed, uh, it hadn't taken so long to get to that point. So then in that, so we've got this DGA. And we have what we call your your um, uh, the the insulation, which is the life of the of the transformer. So when we do that life assessment, which we do it every two years for each transformer, this is now the one that talks to the paper, your insulation of the transformer. Also on the same database, we've got for every transformer it has got. So you are also monitoring the insulation. And I think in the calculation of our um, asset health to check the status, whether it is in a poor or a good condition or a bad condition, we uh, your insulation, which is the, the life expectancy of your, which is what your life expectancy of your transformer depends on, it, it, is, it carries a, a more weighting than the rest. So as soon as you've got a transformer that has, for instance, a DP that is around 200, that is a transformer that is nearing its end of life. Now, what do we do with that? Do we replace it immediately? No, if the transformer, everything else is fine. But what we do is we basically, it becomes critical transformer that is awaiting replacement. We don't switch it out. But while you do that, if there is any work that needed to be done on that transformer, you don't want to switch it on and off and, you know, draining uh, oil from that transformer because you might not get that insulation back. You would start, uh, you know, pulling in vacuum and that's the end of all the active parts yeah. for you because that insulation is gone. So it's, it's you handle it with care while it is in service. And most of those transformers, if untouched, if nothing else, if we, if actually there's no human intervention, those transformers can still go for a, for a little longer in, yeah. in, in service. And so, yes, so that's basically what we are looking into. So it's your, your guessing, whether the transformer is guessing, which can be rectified and, uh, or yeah, you can rectify it. And then you've got the insulation, which plays a bigger role on the end of life for your transformer. And then we have components. Now it's something that you have to actually zoom into because the type of components that your transformer has, like your your, your bushings, for instance, your bushings, your tape changes. Yeah. Your tape changer is the one that requires a lot of maintenance on it. And then when you look at your bushings, you know that you can have a very healthy transformer nice and green and you are relaxing and only for that transformer to be having an oil tap bushing with a deteriorating condition yes. and that transformer catches fire and it's it's always heartbreaking to actually see a transformer that was in good condition and is on fire and only because of a bushing that costs so little compared to the transformer itself so Heart yes it's quite a it's quite a huge scope yes Heartbreaking from green to red overnight. You know, immediately. Yes, I can. Immediately. I've never, I've, I've never heard that word for a transformer that's uh, suddenly caught fires. It's heartbreaking. It's uh, I've heard disheartening. I've heard it's alarming. It's a lot of things. Um, no. We're going to do some more uh, take uh, profiles with you because we've got a lot more to talk about. But um, we're coming to an end on this one, Kaya. It has been a delight. You were. You are uh, a wealth of knowledge, and that knowledge is something that we want to share with our marketplace. Uh, so thank you very much. This has been a, a Transformer Technology Profile with our guest, uh, uh, Kaya Dioka. I had to get that right, um, who is with ESCOM and caring for more Transformers and two daughters and a husband. You have to take care of a lot of people uh, in, in vast numbers. The next time, Kaya, we're going to talk about Sea Gray, and I, I really want to get into this idea of the asset health because that's a, a big issue that everybody is dealing with around the world. Is how do you how do you manage a disparate fleet of transformers from newer construction to older that have been around 20, 30, 40 years, and how do you put all of that uh, that not the data because the data can come in. But how do you manage that data well? But that'll be on the next time that we profile Kaya Dioka. Thank you, Kaya. Thank you very much, Alan, for having me.